thank you everybody for attending today. I see we have a, a nice attendance, 46 people on this on the, the group today. And uh, I'm going <clears> to <throat> go straight into the um, presentation. It's a fairly long presentation. Uh, just for your information, I, I copied a lot of content from the documentation from uh, from the EXA and uh, uh, the, the EXA documentation, so that it's it's all there when you access this presentation again. So the presentation is not in the format of the usual uh, PowerPoint where you have seven points and seven um, seven words per point. So. Please, uh, uh, please bear with me on that. And I'm going to read a lot of that as it is so that you can understand it clearly. Fine. <clears throat> now, first of all, the Engineering Council of South Africa is a statutory body, which means it's a body created by an act of law, by act of parliament, established under the Department of Public Works and Infrastructure in terms of the Engineering Profession Act Act 46 of the year 2000. The primary role of EXA is the regulation of the engineering practice of registered persons and the edu edu uh, accreditation of engineering programs. Now I see uh, we have uh, John's on of the group today and uh, EXA's team is busy accrediting their department at TUT as, as we're talking. <coughs> Uh, Section 28, uh, 26 of the Act uh, 46 of 2000 empowers EXA to develop policy on the identification of engineering work. Now, in 2009, the Council for the Built Environment, which is the overarching council uh, above EXA, <coughs> developed the CBE policy framework on the identification of work for the built environment professions. Now, there are six or seven of those uh, groups of uh, with the engineering profession being what? The scope of work for categories of registration for the profession regulated by the Engineering Council of South Africa was created and submitted to the CBE in September 2013. And uh, now I can't see my own stuff. <laughs> Any case, the CBE presented an application in March 2014 for the exemption with the competition commission reserved the entire scope of work for categories of registration to be performed only by registered persons, which was then gazetted in, in July 2020. The EXA gazetted the identification of engineering work in March 2021. That's an important uh, date to remember because they gave us three years, everybody to register from March this year. Now the objectives of the identification of engineering work is to protect the public. It's not there to protect engineering professionals. First of all, identifying work for each registration category in a match matter that is simple to implement when procuring services from, from or employing a registered persons in a clear, transparent, and accountable manner. Ob a second objective is to ensure that persons who undertake the work identified uh, are accountable for the solutions they, they provide. And thirdly, that to protect the environment and the public by ensuring that only registered engineering professionals who have the, uh, the necessary expertise perform such work. Now, fine. <clears throat> the purpose of the identification of engineering work then is to define and demarcate work between engineering registration categories and acknowledging overlaps that may exist and accountability for such. Secondly, it's to determine in a very concise way the designated work that is that the different registration categories can carry out. Now, that's, that's information that I got exact, as, as straight from from the EXA presentation. <clears throat> Objectives of the idea of work 
is then to provide safety and, provide, and protection of the public and the environment by ensuring that only registered professionals in the different categories of registration who have demonstrated the required competence and academic qualifications perform work, engineering work, or take responsibility for engineering work, so perform per category. There's, there's various regulations related to the identification of engineering work. First of all, there's the Engineering Profession Act, uh, which is the basis of, of the uh, regulations, Act 46 of 2000. Then the regulation number 44333 of 26 March 2021, identification of engineering work regulation. Then there's a code of conduct for registered persons uh, under the Engineering Profession Act, which is an, uh, an extra document. And then the overarching code of practice for the performance of engineering work. Now, the discipline specific codes of practice for the diff uh, different uh, disciplines and subdisciplines are still being developed as we're talking. Just to show you what the documents look like, the Government Gazette, uh, that's where this uh, regulations were published on the left hand side there. And the extra board notice, board notice 21 of 20, uh, 2021, uh, <clears throat> which is the identification of engineering work regulations. Now there's four of these. Uh, as you can see, part one of four on the, on the Government Gazette. Now for the purpose of this notice, identified engineering work is work that entails the engineering activities performed by a person registered in one of the categories of registration to differentiate the one category of registration from another. Now that is a small problem. It requires for its performance the core competencies within the competency areas of uh, that a registered person must possess to perform engineering work in the appropriate category of registration. Uh, in, see, it includes the core service performed by a registered person in any of the categories of registration in a particular engineering discipline. And it includes the practice areas of a particular engineering discipline within which is a, a registered person performs engineering work and involves performing core services in any of the practice areas, if applicable. <clears throat> As various engineering disciplines are defined in this code, uh, in, in this uh, uh, for the code of practice and in the reg regulations. Engineering discipline means the body of knowledge which is applied in one of the following contexts, aeronautical, agricultural, chemical, civil, computer, electrical or electronic, industrial, mechanical, megatronics, metallurgical or mining. And just as a matter of interest, the computer and megatronics uh, disciplines are newly uh, newly recognized. <clears throat> and each of these are, uh, contains the design, development, operation, and maintenance of the various things within those disciplines. I'm not going to read the whole lot for you, uh, but it is part of the documentation if you, if you want to go back to it. Wasn't the, 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 the garden Gina, thing. would you please? Yeah. yeah. This, is, this, is, this, is, this is what they're saying because you the, could you guys please? We don't need um, the feedback. Well, I cannot mute you. Because between the three discs, it's four, five, and six. Mm. That soft tissue is not there. There's yeah. nothing. Gotcha. And down uh, on the spine, there was a bump. They were not yeah. sure until they have, and then there was a blood. Uh, Tabu, can you just switch your uh, mic off? To Sandy, can you switch your mic off also, please? Johan, make this co-host that he can mute while you are talking, please. Find us. Okay. 
I'm trying to, to, to mute all. Okay, it seems, seems like we, we have it uh, sorted now. <clears throat> the problem, if I make Chris co-host, is that I cannot, uh, I cannot share screen. In any case, so there's the various engineering uh, disciplines. <clears throat> now, the elephant elements, elephants, <laughs> elements of identified engineering work co contemplated in sub item one are referred to in item three of, of these regulations, which contains the criteria for category differentiation <clears throat> that is used to determine the engineering activities performed by a person registered in one of the categories. Item four contains the core competencies and item six to 15 contains the core services and practice areas. And it also contains the, the, uh, the, the range, ranges of the various things. And <clears throat> then also the scope of services are co contained in this. Now, where did we go to now? Okay, <clears throat> category differentiation and, uh, of, and engineering activities. Now, the criteria for category differentiation is based on a distinction between a complex, complex broadly defined, well-defined and specifically defined engineering problem and activity. That is the basis on which the various categories are defined. Now, what are complex engineering problems? That is problems that require in-depth fundamental and specialized engineering knowledge and at least one of the following attributes. is ill-posed, high-level, unfamiliar, and involves infrequently encountered issues. I'm not going to read the whole thing, uh, <clears throat> but it is there for you to, to get back to. Uh, it possesses, and in, in addition to the attributes referred to in paragraph A, at least one of the following attributes. Solutions is not obvious and requires originality of analysis, uh, is outside the scope of standards and codes, and requires information from a variety of sources that's complex, abstract, and incomplete. It involves wide ranging and conflicting issues of a technical and engineering nature, and involves wide ranging interest of effect or affected parties with wide ranging and conflicting opinions and so forth. Then broadly defined, uh, it also requires coherent and detailed engineering knowledge underpinning the applicable technology area and at least one of the following attributes is ill-posed, uh, it's encompass systems within broadly defined engineering systems and uh, belong to families of problems which are solved in well accepted but innovative ways. And so forth. I'm not, as again, not going to read the, uh, the whole thing, but it can be solved by structured analysis techniques and uh, so on. In well-defined engineering problems can be solved mainly by practical engineering knowledge underpinned by related theory. Now that is the uh, category for uh, professional engineering technicians. The, 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 uh, broadly defined as the category for professional engineering technologists. Uh, and it mainly can be solved by, problems mainly be solved by standardized and prescribed ways. Again, I'm not going to read the whole thing. Now, the implications of the identification of engineering work is discussed under the points of dual registration, cross-disciplinary practice, uh, professions from professionals from other professions, the appeal process, uh, in, improper conduct, and transitional provisions, which I'm going to go through for your information. Now also, <clears throat> identification of engineering work also is uh, 
touches on academics and government employees. That is a very interesting uh, thing that is specifically uh, in included in these regulations. It says that any person who oversees the planning, design, and delivery of education and training programs accredited by EXA and is the assessment of students at the engineering exit level at higher in education institutions is deemed to be a person who performs identified engineering work. Also, any person who is employed by an organ of state, in other words, who works for, for the government, and whose conditions of service require that that person to manage the delivery and maintenance of engineering work in, is deemed to be a person who performs identified work. In other words, note here, delivery and maintenance. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> how does this these things uh, pertain to every category. For the purposes of uh, Section 18.2 of the Act, <clears throat> a professional engineer is deemed to be registered as an engineering technologist or professional engineering technician, should be professional engineering technologist, and may perform the identified engineering work that a professional engineering technologist or professional engineering technician may perform provided that he or she is competent in terms of his or her education, training and experience to perform that work. Uh, note this last part that says, provided that he or she is competent in terms of his education, training and experience. Unfortunately, the reverse does not apply. And I think that is my personal main uh, object to, uh, up to this whole uh, identification of engineering work. The same applies for professional technologists in professional technician work. It says that uh, professional engineering technologist is deemed to be registered as a professional engineering technician and may perform uh, work of a professional engineering technician prov provided that he or she is competent in terms of his education, training, and experience. And the same goes for technicians as far as the specified scope is concerned. Uh, we'll get to, to this later. The other very interesting uh, point in the regulations is notwithstanding the provisions of this item, a person who is registered as a candidate referred to in section 18, uh, of the Engineering Profession Act may not apply for special consent and may only perform identified engineering work under the direction, control, and direct supervision of a person registered in the appropriate category. Now, there's a transition of the authorization. A person who is registered in terms of the Act after commencement of that act, but before commencement of this notice, who have performed identified engineering work referred to in item 6 to 15, for a person registered in an, a category of registration in which he is not registered, may apply to EXA for transitional authorization. In other words, what it means in simple terms is if you are, as a professional technician or professional technologist, doing engineering, a professional engineering work of a complex nature, you may apply for transitional authorization to EXA. Special consent, uh, again, if you are um, intends to perform work of for a specific project, commission or appointment, or a particular scope of work in which specific competencies are required and, and which is in, identified in this notice uh, and linked to a particular discipline in which you see is not registered. Again, you may apply to EXA for special consent. The application for special consent must be in writing 
submitted to EXA in the form determined by EXA. I haven't seen that form yet. <laughs> a person who is registered as a professional under the Act, other than the Engineering Professions Act. In other words, a person that's an architect or a surveyor or a quantity surveyor, etc., may apply for registration with EXA provided that such a person can show proficiency to perform the identified engineering work applicable to the respective category for registration. In cross-disciplinary practice, now it's, it's generally known that a lot of engineering professionals work in a gray area between, for instance, civil and mechanical or mechanical electrical or civil and electrical or whatever uh, <coughs> uh, disciplines. So a person who's registered as a professional and performs identified work in a particular discipline uh, for which he or she has the competence, education and training and expertise may perform identified engineering work in a different discipline if he or she has the competence, education and training and expertise to perform such work in that different discipline. Uh, it's not stipulated that any uh, application is required for that. Now, if you're not happy about this, any person who feels aggrieved by an action of the EXA as a result of the work identified in this notice or due to refusal by EXA to grant a transitional authorization, special consent or category adjustment contemplated in items 19, 20 or 21 may lodge an appeal against such an action with EXA and the section 35 of the Engineering Profession Act, I presume. Any registered person who is not permitted to undertake work identified in items 5 to 16 or who has not obtained a transitional authorization, special consent or a category adjustment to do so in terms of item 19 or 20 or 21 is in breach of the code of conduct of the EXA. Now, I hope you all have read the code of conduct <clears throat> and uh, have a copy of that in your possession. And uh, obviously the provision of the Engineering Professions Act relating to improper conduct applies, which is the disciplinary action that EXA can take against a, prof a professional, professionally registered person. Uh, <clears throat> any person who is not registered in terms of the act and who is required to be registered according to the uh, reg regulations must within 36 months of the date on which this notice was uh, of when this, this notice comes into operation, apply for registration according to the program contemplated in such item, in the appropriate category referred to in section 18 of the Profession Act. Now, EXA uh, promulgated the identification of engineering work on, I think it's the 21st of March, uh, the, the date is earlier in the presentation, but it's in March 2021. In other words, Everybody working in engineering, doing any engineering work, uh, including academics and including people working for the government and also for um, municipalities, must then register with EXA in his appropriate category within the next two and a half years, because we're already half, half a year away from March. Oops. Oh. The implications of this. Uh, IPIT, the Institute of Professional Engineering Technologists, is an EXA accredited voluntary association representing professional engineering technologists. Now, unfortunately, the regulations were uh, published without us or any of the other voluntary associations being consulted. 
and nobody could therefore comment on this before it was published. Uh, just as a matter of interest, because of implications of the previous publication of idea of work, uh, IPET and myself and some other uh, professional technologists took the matter to the, idea, to the competition uh, commission because we, we were excluded from work that we could, that we had always done. And uh, we had won the case. Unfortunately, we've had reports of organizations refusing the signatures of professional engineering technologists since this publication of these regulations. Uh, we are in the process of taking it up with EXA, but we need to know, uh, need the hard evidence. And only we also, we don't only need one or two cases. I had a call from uh, a professional technologist the other day, two days ago, and it wasn't the first one uh, about um, people being excluded from tendering by, uh, by uh, government departments. Please discuss such refusals with us at uh, that email address or send a message on that phone number and we at IPIT will take it up. We're already taking up matters regarding the, uh, the Environmental Act together with, with SICE uh, with the department. We, we're arranging a meeting with them. We're waiting for the, for the meeting to, be, uh, to come off. So we are doing something about this, but we intend to do more. We believe that these are unintended consequences. I don't think that EXA meant to exclude us. But uh, <clears throat> since we believe that it's unintended consequences and that we hope to resolve it in an amicable and non-confrontational and a professional way. Just some final comments. This presentation was brought to you by IPET, the Institute of Professional Engineering Technologists. The content of this presentation was mainly sourced from the identification of engineering work regulations. That's why I copied it verbatim and didn't summarize it uh, <clears throat> from the EXA board notice and also from an EXA identification of engineering work presentation dated the 26th of August. That was for the various uh, the, uh, uh, voluntary associations were, in, uh, were invited to. We will apply to EXA for EXA CPD validation for this presentation. Obviously not everybody who is on this group today, uh, I see there's 56 of us, uh, need the CPD uh, certification for this, but if you need it, please send a mail requesting a certificate of attendance to, to admin at ipad.org.za. Uh, the recording of this presentation will be made available free of charge on that professional CPD website where all the other recordings are also made available. You're welcome to join. If you're a professional technologist, join the tech engineering technologist family at our website and uh, <clears throat> also to join our registration advice group and our job adverts person, portal where we advertise jobs in engineering, uh, please ask by WhatsApp on that number. Thank you for attending. Uh, we will take discussion and questions, uh, also questions about extra registration. We'll answer as, as well as we can. Uh, I'm also not, apart from having read through these uh, regulations two or three times, uh, I'm not a fundi and uh, I cannot speak for EXA on it, but we'll, we'll try and answer your questions. Thank you very much. If you have a question, Please. Um, 
Can I just come in there on one comment that you made? Uh, even the guys that aren't registered, I would like them to also apply for the, the points because they can use it in their IDP format. That can be seen that they are also attending because they must put that in on their last on their application. Thanks, Chris. Okay, there's a lot of questions. The first one is okay. Let's just see, uh, Dominique. What does transitional authorized entail? What does special consent mean, and what does it? When does it apply? Apply and is uh, please illustrate. Did you answer that one, John? Quickly, or we'll try. What do I understand? I'm just scrolling down. Transitional authorization. Uh, well, <laughs> it, it's special. It's a special authorization to work. Uh, to do work in uh, a category for which you are not, or a discipline for in which you are not registered, basically in, in short words. Well, it's basically if you've done trained in uh, civil and then you have to do some mechanical work that you've been trained for that. That's what I understand. Is that what it means? Yeah, yeah as I said, you know, a lot of people are working in that area between disciplines and uh, yeah. personally i <laughs> i'm qualified in civil but in my work in railways i did a lot of work in metallurgical and uh, uh, mechanical uh, work so in other words if, if if i was doing that now i would have to 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 uh, and i would be signing off on it um I would be required to 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 apply for transitional or special consent. Uh, I see very there's much another the question, Guy Letter. Before we get to you, uh, uh, transitional how we get authorization. And yes, can I just say the so transitional authorization and special contents is very similar to each other. That's what uh, we just have to uh, notify. You agree with that, you are? Yeah. The point is you have to apply okay. to EXA for it. Yes. And then I see there's Estelle. She's asking a question before we can go to up the hand. Uh, How will we get a senior personnel registered with EXA with more than 20 years? There's a serious issue in my company whereby the lead system engineers are not registered. Well, they, they were, the, the regulation requires them to register. They have to register. <laughs> I think there's no value to it. Uh, the point is that this regulation requires them to register uh, and, and they will have to register within the next two and a half years, whether they like it or not. Okay. So then the next one is from Bruno. Uh, Bruno, we're just going to say, is he must just uh, send an email to admin at ipet.org.za for his CPD certificate. That's all. Uh, Kayaletu, you had a question. Thank, uh, thank you, thank you, Chair. Am I audible? Yes, we can hear you oh, and okay. we can see you. OK, thank you, Chair. Uh, my, basically, I have a comment, not necessarily a, a, a question. And also, I would say it's an approach to how we should approach XI, especially in the, uh, in the matters that were raised in the presentation. Uh, you'll remember in the presentation, you did highlight that uh, there, are, there are some organizations that do not allow PR uh, uh, technologies to sign some document uh, for which uh, is, is some documents for work that they've done before. Now, I would like us to sort of like have a clear direction as when we are going to EXA, because to my understanding, it is not EXA uh, that is a problem uh, uh, in this matter. It is the organizations. You'll remember in the WhatsApp group, I did mention there that we also have uh, organizations like Sunral. After having qualified as a PR technology, Sunral develops the, the PR uh, for uh, uh, bridge inspection and all that. And the mandate, my understanding, I don't know, I'm open to being uh, corrected. 
the mandate of central is design maintenance and also management of national roads and not to regulate the engineering profession now i doubt if they do have the power to say you cannot tender for a c18 project because you don't have that pr for inspection i also shared a document from uh, kz and a Department of Human Settlements, where they indicated on their guideline for, for geotechnical practitioners, they said uh, the, the people who are competent to, to submit geotechnical reports are only professional uh, engineers. Where, where I'm going is that we have institutions that are now getting into the EXA space, and we need to correct that, that uh, the institutions shouldn't have their own requirements for tendering, we only have EXA for regulation of the engineering profession. So how we are going to EXA, we should say, this organization will feel like they are entering into a space by doing these particular things uh, uh, without having gone through like the necessary document that EXA publishes, because we are not fighting the complex, the, the definition of each kind of goal, like the complex work of the engineers, the broadly defined, defined uh, 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 work, we are not arguing on that. We are arguing on people who don't allow us to, to register. So I would like us to really align our approaches when we are going to exit. Thank you. Thanks. We go to, uh, it's very valid. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, if we have EXA behind us to approach these organization, then we have a, a, a bigger voice. Um, and that is why we are uh, taking hands with other voluntary associations to, to, um, uh, to, to, to take, uh, take this matter further. The point is that we have to do something about it and we have to approach these people. And if they don't want to uh, give us leeway, then we will have to take it further to the Competitions Commission as well as taking it up with excess disciplinary what's name because the exa code of conduct say that you're not allowed to take the, the, the bread out of the next guy's uh, mouth and uh, a lot of people don't seem to to worry about that uh, also a lot of people uh, previously uh, strategic planning in engineering was done by engineers, by senior engineers. And nowadays it's done by, uh, by, by politicians. And uh, so the engineers don't do it anymore. And a lot of complex work is taken out of their mouths by uh, politicians. And so they are working on a broadly defined level. And unintentionally they are thinking that that actually is well a, a, a complex so we have to 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 get a lot of clarity on where the line is because there's not a there's not a, a direct line between complex and broadly defined uh, it is a gray area and and uh, there's still going to be many disagreements about what is complex and what is broadly defined. In any case, Adrian, you, you had your hand up second. <laughs> Can you unmute yourself? Hi, Johan. Yeah, firstly, thank you for presenting a very delicate topic. Um, and it's going to be an interesting rollout. And now it's all implemented. I'm sure there's going to be, as they say, teething problems. The one of them that uh, I think it's already been mentioned is the overlap with the a PR technologists and a PRMs. There's quite a bit of overlap, I think, in general, if I could say. And I know in my environment, it would, it would be quite a process to differentiate what is PRMs work and what is the PR technologist work. Because we, do, we all like work together, if that makes sense. We don't necessarily just say, okay, that is specifically PRN. That's how we've got to do it over a long period of time now. So there's gonna to have to be some assessments within as to what work is actually what in terms of PRN and PR technologists. 
So, yeah, just a comment. I think there's going to be a lot of transitional authorization <laughs> applications. I don't know if uh, Excel, I think, is going to get quite a few coming through and being submitted. So, uh, just a gut feeling on that. Um, so, those are just my comments. Um, yeah, I don't know what your guys' thoughts are. Is that is that fixed in concrete now, This uh, what you've gone through? Or is it still open for discussion? Well, the regulations are, 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 are there. They, they, are, uh, they are published in the Government Gazette, and as such, they are, um, to some extent, uh, cast in concrete. <clears throat> Because uh, I'll just say one more thing. I'll give you a scenario. What happens if someone is in a position and they're doing PR Eng work, but they're registered as a technologist and they're awaiting that transitional authorization? Does that person stop that work until that authorization is uh, complete? Because there could be delays in that, in that whole process. That's what... Um, is my concern maybe do, do you know what i mean what, what i'm saying now with that delay i i, I, I assume and that's an assumption uh Anna marie you might be able to to give us some guidance on that um <clears throat> uh that if you've applied for it then you should probably be able to to carry on with it if you've been doing it for for a long period in any case uh, so you, if if you are working on 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 that level then obviously then and, and you, you you should be applying for it but the, the, there's a, a very uh difficult situation here as you said adrian there's a big overlap between technician uh, techno, between technician and technologist work and as well as technologist and engineers work and even to some extent between technician and engineers work. So uh, <clears throat> there's no hard and fast line. And that is the problem. When technologists came into being in the first place, uh, now I'm talking of the late 70s and the 80s, when the Professional Engineers Act was first proclaimed, it was the old SACP Act. A lot of people were excluded who were working in, in firms, working, doing the same work as the next guy who are registered and who were refused to be registered. So there was a commission of, of, of inquiry and it was proposed that the, the, the professional technologist and the professional technician be uh, well, a registered technician at that stage, be, be brought into being. And at the time, it was said that the professional technologist was doing complex engineering work. Now, somehow, EXA has lost sight of that little bit. And that is, uh, that's been like that for forever. The, in, the professional engineering technologist was supposed to be working at the same level as a professional engineer, albeit in a specialist field. So in other words, in his specialist field, the professional technologist was doing complex work. And the professional engineer was working over a broad field. In other words, professional engineer to this day is supposed to know things about water, uh, in talking of cells, of water engineering, transportation engineering, structural engineering, geotechnical engineering, whereas a professional technologist was supposed to be a specialist in one of those fields. So uh, there is some discussions required regarding these uh, regulations that still needs to be done. And we want to do it in a professional way. And that's why we will be approaching EXA uh, to, to, to take this matter up. Instead of... Hi, hi, Chad. thanks for, thanks for taking my hand. My name is Naitom Kondweni. It's a, quite an interesting uh, topic, but I think my comment is one, unfortunately, as much as we are technologists here, 
I think this is a political problem because the intention is to create the myth that the skills shortage still exists, which it doesn't exist. Because if you look at the work itself, we've all said mouthful in terms of how the overlaps are. And if you look at your demographics within X in terms of how many black registered technologists, how many black registered engineers, how many female uh, engineers and how many female technologies, you will see that the numbers don't lie. So the only way now to put the next filter in is to introduce the, the issue of the engineer, which is, has always been the, the problem. Then the second comment is the issue of EXA. EXA reports to CBE. We still have the Council for Built Environment. And I think when we are engaging EXA, we should write the same letter that we are sending to the Competition Commission and send that to, to, to the Council for Built Environment because all the six or seven councils, at the end of the day, they account to the Council for Built Environment. And if we believe that this action that they are doing is counter transformation, we can even push that narrative because from where I'm sitting, it's just another form of saying that the skills shortage, yet we know what actually makes an engineer, it's not your academic qualifications, it's the, the opportunity that you are given where you are practicing that defines your final competence in terms of what you have learned from the underlying fundamentals. So I think for me, this is a political problem and it needs to be escalated. Uh, I know certain councils like the architects, for example, they are still sort of hard, 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 hard hard in terms of the issue of technologies and professional architects. We've seen with EXA that over the years, uh, but unfortunately some of the client base, we had one now, which, which was frustrating. You get a university like uh, Walter Sisul University issuing out a tender for refurbishment of their building blocks. And they are specific that the, the people that must be responding there uh, must be PR and and it's just simple maintenance work, refurbishment that can be done by a professional uh, uh, technologist also. So I think for me, this is more of a political problem than a profession problem. And it needs to be escalated to EXA, to CBE, to the Competition Commission, and everyone else that can assist. Thank you very much. Thank you. I think it's very valid comments there. Uh, hi, yes. Um, hi, everyone. Um, thanks, Johan. Yes. Um, I think uh, my question might be a little bit out of the uh, the current scope, or you might have um, answered this question uh, previously. But um, I just want to check, um, for instance, if someone is registered as a PR technique, and they want to um maybe recently they've gotten their b tech and they want to register as a pr tech and all along you've been doing you know broadly defined problems or complex problems um is it still mandatory to wait for that three years after your qualification or you can simply uh, just resubmit um how is the process work yes. Can you answer that? I unfortunately had to quickly take a call and say. Okay, <laughs> thanks. All right. Uh, basically, what you can do is if you've got enough experience, you can go up to your RO2, STA, PE, PT, uh, PCE, and P, uh, the under Appendix A on that document. There it will tell you if you've got your national diploma and you've got uh, experience of. I think if I remember right, it's uh, five, eight years with uh, at least three years of um, level E experience, you can apply on the alternative route. If you've done your BTEC, for instance, that we also look at sometimes we do allow it, the person has been working on a broadly defined level for many years and he had only one subject to get his BTEC, and it's been, for instance, six years, and then he got his BTEC, 
we also look at that, take that into consideration. You know, then they can apply straightforward onto the VTEC too. But in your case, it must be, we will have to go through the alternative route case there. If you did your BTEC and you've been working for many years with your national diploma and you only got your BTEC now, you can go on the alternative route there. So then you fill in the first uh, five outcomes on your beat on your alternative route, and then you go on to your normal form of your training experience uh, report, engineering report, I mean. Then you fill it from six to 11, then accordingly. Okay. Sure, thanks, Chris. Okay, then uh, one thing I just want to make a note your regulations, you can amend them. If we all have enough information, as what Johan said there, that we got existing problems that we're picking up, we, they say they do not recognize a PR technology, technologist, professional technologist, we can. We've got enough, we can go to EXA and a competition board and get this regulation put aside. It can be put aside. Because it can also be stated as unconstitutional, according to what we are required to do, the way we can practice freely, according to our constitution. Okay. You're on. Thanks, Chris. Some background noise somewhere. Uh, uh, it's by me. The guys are screaming outside. Yeah, I'm actually on site. <laughs> if I go outside, I th I'm just going to mute it. Then I'm going to tell them to shut up and uh, get out of my office, near my office. <laughs> just for your information, Chris is working on is is, is uh, taking this thing off from from his construction site where he's working. So you must please um, bear with him because uh, we all know what, what it's like on construction sites. Kalka, uh, <clears throat> did you answer your question? Yes, uh, Johan, thank you. Uh, my thank question you. was answered, thanks. Thank you, Kalka. Uh, uh, Tabu Mongali, please unmute yourself. Uh, yes, yes, can you hear me, Daddy? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, okay. Thank you very much for the information that uh, you are speaking to Tabo from Velgom in the Free State. Uh, I, I just had a, a, an interview with Engineering Council of South Africa about two days ago, uh, where it was about uh, educational, educational background, or okay, should I say educational evaluation. I studied in China for a period of four years no. where I, obt I obtained my bsc in electrical engineering so now when i came back home i first went through saka and then saka gave me npf level eight now what i want to understand is that what escas to me is that they will give me feedback based on what they understood from what i told them now then then meaning that but what i wanted to initially register for was to be a candidate engineer but then they said they will first tell me where I fall, whether whether candidate or technologist or, or, or even below below that. So now what I want to understand is that I was not the only one who studied there, but then I'm, I'm the first one to, to do this process. So I want to understand that, meaning that whatever I get will be a benchmark for whoever who will follow behind me of the very same class of the very same year, irrespective of how their interview went in terms of uh, being able to answer all the questions or being able to satisfy the 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 the, the, the panel which, which was asking the question. I don't know if my question is clear enough. Thank you. Yes, uh, I would like to ask Jones. I saw you on the group, Jones. I don't know whether you're in a position to answer the question, please. Mr. Molisane. Yes, Mr. Cocker. Ah, thanks. Sorry, my, I've started with my uh, mute button here. So, yeah, uh, let me maybe explain something to go further. The way what I got from Tabo is that you studied overseas in China somewhere. Yes, yes, in China, in China, Beijing Institute of Technology in Beijing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what happens is that we are, as South Africa, a member of the International Engineering Alliance, 
where I served for the past eight years as well in the executive committee. So China, with its variety, it came on board in 2014, but then it means some of those uh, universities are not part of the accreditation that has to do with the international generalists in the Washington Accord. So your qualification does not fall within the Washington Accord. Then uh, EXA uses the E17P RO document and E18P RO document to do what you call substantial equivalence of your qualification because your qualification is not accessed by EXA, it's not accredited by EXA, it's not known by EXA. So they have to do that uh, uh, substantial equivalence. Now remember, there's a provision that has been given on your SACWA certificate that when it goes to the professional bodies, they've got the right to do re-evaluation for the purposes of registration. What South African Qualifications Authority has done is only for the purposes when you go to from in academia, when you move, if you want to go to another university that has been taken care of. But when it comes to all professional bodies, be health from Health Profession Council, they've got their right, they've been given that mandate. And it's also in the act, if you check act, in terms of section 13, that's the Engineering Professions Act, it clearly states that they've got the authority to do a re-evaluation for the purposes of registration in terms of engineering. So they will do that re-evaluation, evaluate your qualification in terms of the assessment of how did you um, gain academic knowledge? How was the course presented in terms of the laboratories, in terms of the structure of the education system? For example, you might find that something is missing that is not covered in what the Washington Accord requires. So that's where the base is coming from in terms of the, uh, edu uh, the interview that they're going to have in terms of the substantial equivalence of your qualification. I hope I've answered it correct. I'm available to assist further. No, actually I've had the interview already. So I'm just- Oh, yes. So, but now what, what, what you are saying to me, what, what, what I wanted to understand was that now, because now uh, in, like, we are quite a lot in our class, South Africans. Yeah. So then amongst them, I'm the first one to do this process. But the, what, what I want to understand is that uh, whatever Eska says, says to me to say, maybe uh, I qualify to, to be a candidate engineer or qualify to be a candidate te technician. Uh, is that, is that, will that be the benchmark for everyone who will follow me behind irrespective of the outcome of the interview? Um, I, I, I don't follow the, repeat the, the part of the benchmark. I'm saying because now, let, let's say Eska comes back to me and say, no, Tabo, you qualify to be a, a candidate technician. Here, 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 you, here you go. So what about the guys that are going to become, who will come after me to come and register? The guys yeah. of the same okay. class, same, will they get the same qualification? Because now, we, what I did as them is the same thing, but it's just made now be you now the method of the interview, I guess, or I don't know. I, I just mm. need like it in there. Yeah. Unfortunately, the Washington Accord pre prescripts, and you can check them, the rules and regulations there, talks about, uh, okay, maybe let me go back a little bit, step backwards. At the moment, then uh, Mr. Nkoker will know and Mr. Maynard will know as well. We've done the accreditations uh, for the qualification for the programs. So that is done for the program, not an individual. The moment you enter EXA, it's about Tabo Mangali. That's all. You get it. So that's how they look at it. So another Tabo will come from the same day, same qualification, will have his own his or her own merit. And based on the qualification, because you see the catch comes where. They don't know what you did there because they have not accredited the program. They never, they never endorsed the program. They don't know about it. So you might find you come from the same class, same whatever, but that person is unable to get through, you get through, or the other way around, because it's about the individual. And that's where it comes now that what if it was a pass one, pass all system, the way you come from? They don't know that, the engineering concept. And that's why there's a reason why South Africa is only country in, the, in Africa out of 54 countries that is a member of the International Engineering Analysis. And we pride ourselves with that. And I've served there for eight years. I know how things are done in terms of the Washington Accord, Sydney Accord, and the Dublin Accord. So those that are not members of those countries, we don't know what they are doing in their programs. The reason being that us as members, and we are 49 jurisdictions, 39 countries there, is for, for the same reason that we know what we are doing. We do the same thing because we can check each other. Every six years, they send people to come and check in the fifth year before the expiry of what we have done in terms of our accreditation. So they come and check on EXA as to how they have done the accreditation. But every year we submit an annual report 
on the accreditations that have been done. And mind you, we also take away accreditation in our own country to show that this is a quality assurance process that is accessed. Now, when from your university, those kind of things that I'm talking about, nobody knows about them. We don't have them. And that's why it comes that now it is on the merit basis and on individual basis that every person who comes from there will have his her, her own interview separately, not influencing each other because they look at those merits because nobody knows what is in the program. I hope I answered it correctly in terms of where the quality assurance comes in there. No, I understand it very, very well. But then, you know, the other thing is that uh, mm. students of mechanical engineering, they are accredited. They, they got their candidates, they got their registration to be candidates, uh, of, uh, candidate engineers with ESC. So maybe it's more, maybe it's now, because now ESC can also to say within a school, we can accredit a certain faculty, not accredit a certain oh, faculty. No, 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 like, no, 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 no. But they didn't make it like that. Students you see, they, 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 for, for example, like, yeah, let, let, let me assist you. In South Africa, they will go and do an accredit because, okay, let me just, just go back a little bit, step backwards. Especially with the qualification that we've got a good example now because like, and you, as you can see, you can, get, you can gauge my age. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a protege of Mr. De Cocker and Mr. Maynard. I found them on the way. They are the ones who brought me on board. So I found these things were there. But now with the HQSF qualification that we have in the country, the so-called new qualification, your BH text, and your diplomas that are new. I was part of the curriculum development and I was part of these policies that X are wrote. So what happens is, in, in, after the, the university has done what you call a program qualification mix, that is submitted to the Department of Education and Training for a quality check. Once they've done that, they pass it to Council for higher on Higher Education, which is CHE. CHE is the council same as X about on education matters for the country that advises the Ministry of Education and Training, Science and Innovation. Once that is done, they say they cannot do the initial accreditation before a professional body in all aspects, in health, you name it, law, accounting, whatever, before a professional body has done an endorsement. The endorsement that EXA will do is to say, in these 55 subjects that we have, we, are, we need 19 of them to be engineering related. And that's where they come in. So once that has been given endorsement, so it means now EXA knows about that engineering qualification. So then it goes back to CHE, then they give it a go ahead for the university to start marketing, then they go to SACWA to get the SACWA ID number, then it gets on an NQF level, then they, the problem started to unfold. Students get into the program. The initial accreditation is done by CHE. The second one that will come on provisional is EXA's baby from there onwards forever is EXA now. EXA on behalf of CHE because the, the, the students that come or the graduate that come from the program are a product that are going to that are going to register with EXA. Hence I say what SACWA has done is for academic purposes, but for registration purposes, because where it is going to matter in your life, it is EXA now that is involved in there to say this person is going to get registered with us. We need to know the basics that they have in their program that goes in there. So if, for example, where you come from, they were part of the Washington Accord or Sydney Dublin Accord. This, what you're talking about, was not going to be necessary because EXA will have done an accreditation on that program. Or, for example, Engineers Australia and Australia will have done that. We know we follow the same route. We write in the IEA and EXA involved South Africa as being a member. We write what needs to be, what needs to go into the engineering program. For example, you'll find that one graduate attribute is not covered in where you studied. Now they'll say, okay, we've got a gap here. Go and do some work or go and retake this course or this module or this subject to close that gap. And that's where this thing come in to make life easier. That's why Institute in the world became part of these Washington Accords and the Sydney Accords and the Dublin Accords to, 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 to demystify these doubts, if I put it that way, of what is in your program. They're not saying your program is not sufficient. It's not an engineering program, but they don't know about it. And that's why this exercise has to take place and on an individual basis and on merit basis. I hope I've answered it correctly now to explain where the process is coming from and how it came about. Yes, it, it, it's very clear, but what, okay. what, I, what I'd also say to it is it, it's a fact, what I'm seeing to say, students of mechanical engineering, I know for a fact, I've seen the certificate for a fact, they are candidate engineers. Yes, so, that, that's nothing wrong. Fact. Remember, Cabo, those are, they've been, they, they went through the same route as you. So they got it on the merit basis. It's not that because one got it, they give to everybody. So it might, 
Yeah. Come again. Well, come I, 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 just a, a, a bit. I was saying to say when when uh, we went to to, to Esca first, it, we it Exa, was not Esca. Uh, Engineering uh, Council of South Africa. Yes. Uh, okay. In that and then for, then when I went there, it was me from electrical and one mm -hmm. from mechanical. Uh, we both enrolled same year, 2015, graduated same year, 2019. And then, then and in terms of course-wise, uh, first year, same classes, and then second semester, almost same classes, and then we branched out. Now, when we came, them, they, they, it was found that mechanical, they were on the system, or they were part of Washington Accord. Electrical mm. was not, hence I went mm. to this, this long route. Mm. Mm. Now I wanted, oh, to, that, I wanted to, yeah, to see now. That's a different yes, piece. So now, yeah, it means then the problem is with the awarding country. So China is the problem here that it means, for example, in South Africa as well, we've got a, a it used to be Monash, it's now called IEE MMM something South Africa. They are offering engineering degrees, but they are not part of the, when you talk of in South Africa that they have been recognized as their, Exa has just done first, for the first ever in this year, the accreditation, they've, give, they've done the provisional accreditation. All these years, they were offering those degrees, but they were not part of it. So it means then the awarding country, they have used the mechanical engineering as part of the Washington Accord, not electrical engineering in your case. So it cannot be, it's not a fault of EXA now, it's a fault of the awarding country because that comes from a country. I'll give you an example. If the University of Johannesburg decides tomorrow to open a branch or a, a site in Botswana, they cannot say because the university branch in, in campus in Dorenfontein or in Kingsway in, in South Africa has got accreditation from EXA, then automatically translate to the one in Botswana. It is site specific. Those ones have to go there. It has to be accredited separate. You see, so it will be the challenge of the jurisdiction in that regard. I can understand where you're coming from. I think your question is, is to say, but why in the same institution they've only used the other program and not the other program? That is something that is out of your control, beyond your control. Because now my question was now, because now in terms of content, you can say that uh, 5%, we covered the same stuff, or maybe 40%, then it's only 60% mm -hmm. where we divide. And mm -hmm. just, just, just the last one, that this one, I don't know, it is still a puzzle to me, even though you try, you try to explain it. Uh, SACA, South African Qualification Authority, mm -hmm. when they evaluate me, they evaluate me according to engineering subjects offered in South Africa. Am I correct? No, 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 no. They don't do that. Let me explain. I served on their foreign qualifications committee for nine years. I know what they do. In fact, like 11 years. They looked at, is it an engineering program? Did you pass? The other thing that comes in is that the Washington Accord requirement is the pass mark is 50%. That's when the credit get uh, awarded in South Africa, even in general. So Sakwa will say, oh, I come from this, I passed with 40, still fine. You did engineering, they allow you. That's why the professional bodies have got a problem. So other students who pass with 50, or less than 50, they've got their own jurisdiction pass with 40. Those qualifications, those modules are not recognized because the credit bearing and calculation in South Africa start to kick in, in terms of the 50% pass, not less than that. So, what they have done, they look at, is it a four-year program? Is it a five-year program? They don't do the uh, intensive way of looking at the module like EXA is doing, because that is those are the prescripts that come from the Washington Accord or the International Engineering Alliance. So they don't do that in that way. They don't compare. They just look at, is it a four-year program? Does it have the module of engineering? Is it 25 subjects, for example, or module or courses? Yes, then it passes the grade. That's why what they write there, they say, the closest probable, that's SACWA now, the closest probable level of, NQ, of national qualification framework will be this. But that is for academic purposes. Hence, on their proviso, they've written that when you go for professional registration with any professional body, they've got the right and they reserve the right as it is entrenched in their act to reevaluate you for the purposes of what they have endorsed that those engineering, because you have to be matching the same standard as the South African qualifications that have been endorsed by X. That's a difference that comes in there. But X will not say, we have evaluated your qualification for substantial equivalence, and we are saying your qualification is now equivalent to South African one. It's only for the legibility to register as a candidate with X. They'll never even issue a certificate. They just give you a letter that 
after this exercise, then you are eligible to register as a candidate uh, for whatever for either category, either engineer, engineering technologies, or engineering technician. Full stop. You never use it that way any other way. But SAPA certificate, that's why they give you a certificate that you can use in academic purposes. For example, if you want to study further in the university in South Africa, that you can use that. SAPA has done that only for that. Okay, no, I, I no, thank you very much for the info. Pleasure. But the, okay, even if I, I had say, let's say I had continued with masters here back home, then I then after what I went, I'm going to back to, to register with the engineering board. Will will it will still be the same process? Remember, the masters is not uh, at the moment which masters, because if you check the E 23P, there's a pathway of the professional masters that is recognized for registration. The research masters, you have to go through the same process because is not accredited by EXA. EXA accredits the base qualifications that leads to engineering. Now with the pathway of what we have in South Africa on the HQSF, and maybe let me allow a chair to address it. There's an articulation process that can one go through. For example, if, for example, one has gone through the, the okay, let's start with the, the diploma. The diploma is, is, is accredited as the HQSF for registration as a candidate engineering technician. And then after that is advanced diploma, which is on the same level as the Bachelor of Engineering Technology. Then afterwards, there's a Bachelor of Engineering Honors. The Honors degree is not for registration purposes, but it's a step to go to the postgraduate that is used now to go to the master's. So when you go to the master's, the master's is the one, because you're already a technologist with the Bachelor of Engineering Technology and an advanced diploma. The next level is to get to engineer, engineer candidacy as an engineer. So to get there is the master's, the, the um, the one that is under E-22P on the extra documents. So that one is the mas professional master's, but before you get there, you have to get the honors, then you have to get the postgraduate diploma. You follow? When you come, the postgraduate will come from the stream of the diploma, advanced diploma, and, but if you come from the stream of the Bachelor of Engineering, then you have to do the honors. So the honors and the postgraduate diploma are not for registered, but you need them to get to the master's that is recognized for a leeway to register as a candidate engineering, uh, as, a, as a candidate engineer, you follow. So if you do a master's, it depends which master's. If you do a research master's, you still go through the same panel of the qualification evaluation so that they can check that did it meet the graduate attributes that are stated in the master's, the professional master's. Because the third and fourth year of the E-02PE, which is the Bachelor of Science in Engineering degree qualification of the BEng, it is, it is the one that is captured now in the masters for substantial equivalence because the engineers were saying, but the technicians and the, and the technologists have not covered this base in there. Then they have to do the masters and start with the honors or the postgraduate diploma so that they can get the base at the beginning, the fundamentals to build up before they get to the masters. I hope I answered it correctly. I'm I with you all the way. Thank, thank you very much for the information. Pleasure. Okay. Thank you, Jones. Also, just for everybody's um, knowledge, Jones uh, has been on EXA Council for a long time, and uh, he's been involved in the in, in, in international agreements and stuff. So that's why I asked him to, to take the question. And there's one or two other people on the on, on the group today that's also been on EXA Council. So. Uh, mm. And um, while well, I'm still here, can I maybe just, I saw on the chat as well, with regards to the identification of engineering work, that is not addressed correctly. Yes. The identification of engineering work, uh, it's not an, it's not to differentiate between PR and PR tech. It is about the work reservation. So which kind of work can be done by who? That's the whole idea about, that's why it says identification of engineering work. No, we should not miss the alignment. And I, I, think I, I saw the name Dr. Mkundu, and he, he captured it very well that if that was the intention, it will have to go to the competition commission because now it becomes anti-competitive. It cannot be said, this person because it has registered in this cannot do that work. You need to prove yourself. I was involved twice now for EXA with the Auditor General. Uh, as uh, Mr. Gokar said, I'm saving on council at the moment. And uh, with uh, Transnet, whereby the people were saying, as technologists, we are doing engineering work. I said, but it's easy. It's like, if I say to you, I can fly a plane, I must go prove it and fly a plane. So these people are telling you as technologists, they are doing this, they can do engineers work, they are doing engineers work, they need more pay. 
There's only one body in South Africa that can do that. And that body is the Engineering Council of South Africa that will prove that. So it's easy. Then they, they went to EXA. Some of them were, were able to get registered as professionals. Some of them did not. Then I said to those that did not, then, then it means you are not engineer, you're not doing civil, I mean, you're doing engin engineers work as you have claimed, because the proof has been proven now. Those that then, it solved the problem. I said, it's easy to make noise and all of this. Go and get registered with X in that category. They don't buy you. If you check in the act, nowhere in the act they say, you need a BSc to get registered as a professional engineer. They only mention professional engineer. Nowhere they say you need a diploma to register as a, as a, as a tech engineering technique, professional engineering technician. But the professional technician as an end goal has been mentioned in the act. So it is about competency that you get there. Of course, yes, education gives a leeway to get into there. But there are people who are registered today who don't have those qualifications. Why? Because they've proven that the 11 outcomes that are stated there by terms, in terms of their competency, the work that they do, they can do that. So what I'm trying to get to is that an engineering technologist can have a work reservation that was in the past before the identification of engineering work was done by engineers, professional engineers. It's about that kind of work that the person can do. That's what the identification of engineering work is all about. So what I'm bringing up is that we should not be scared and miss the point. And we know for the fact that I'm happy that Mr. Dikoker mentioned it, that we know it in the country as well. Half dozen or half of our us as professional engineering technologists, we are doing professional engineers work or we're doing engineers work and it's a fact. But because now there was nothing that was assisting in that category or in that regard to box this or to reserve this, we were left in the ledge. But this identification, is going to prove that and assist those that were left out. And I see my former colleague, Kalensel member, Anna Marie Sassenberg is also in the chat. Hello, Anna Marie, how are you? Because we were together in the 2012 to 2016 Council of EXA. I came back now after four years of absence for this one of 2020 to 2024 in Council again, Anna Marie. And Mr. Dikoker has been there before in Council as well. And I was also the, the former president uh, of IPED and Mr. Menhar took over from me as he was my a uh, immediate dean, uh, closer, a uh, 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 senior vice president at that time. So I'm well vested in our field and we'll ad advise and assist where we can. Thanks, Mr. Dikoker. I really appreciate it. And Mr. Dikoker is the one who brought me on board in 1996 to get involved. So I'm revealing my age now with the uh, engineering work and it's paying back now today. Thanks, Wilm. Thanks, Jones. <clears throat> The point is that uh, those days I saw Jones there and I saw, oh, here's a guy with some, some potential and uh, brought him into the, into the fold. Uh, <clears throat> fine, any more questions? I see some old ads still up. I think uh, if we need some, some new questions, there was a question about the uh, BTEC being in structural or or whatever, uh, too technical or whatever in civil engineering. And why does EXA not, not uh, identify your, your specialist field on your uh, registration? It is an interesting question. They've never done it before. And um, uh, because of this, the, the uh, identification of work regulations and stuff that's still developed they might have to do it in future we don't know but that is something that uh, uh, that we the, the point is in the first place that you registered in in your category we be that as a, a professional technologist or a professional engineer or a, or a specified scope or a professional technician uh, that is the, the first thing that uh, that counts uh, so um, I, I don't think it's necessary to, although it would be nice to, to, uh, to have it on your, on, on your certificate. Um, uh, what, um, what your specialist field is. There's a question, please elaborate on the professional masters. Jones, can I ask you again to, to, to talk about that? What the professional masters is, is is about and what it, what it will give you? Yeah, um, what is, okay. The first call of entry will be to consult 
the E-23P because it gives the pathways of the, an articulation of qualifications. Now, E-22-PE is about the, 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 the master's degree that EXA recognizes for registration purposes. Now, in the universities, they are running a business and producing researchers. There are two streams of master's degrees. The other one is a research master's that is not for registration purposes because it's not taught master's, it's a research master's. Then we also have, that does not even have graduate attribute. Even other universities have got the, the taught master's, but does not have, it just got coursework, does not have graduate attributes. Then the next one is the professional master's that is for the purposes of registration. That's the one we are talking about, that the standard qualification standard will be found in E-22-PE. If you go there, it, it is a mirror image somewhere of the e 02 PE, which is the Bachelor of Science in Engineering or the BN qualification, whereby there are graduate attributes that are there, that are stated there, the 10 graduate attributes that are in engineering that needs to be done. And that's the only difference that is there compared to the research masters and the professional masters. That one was done specific for registration purposes. But more information, but first start by reading E-22, I mean 23 PE, which is the pathways of registration to any level, starting from higher certificate until professional engineer or I mean, candidate engineer. And then when you get to the masters, then read E-22 PE because it's got all the content of what that is all about. And I'm also involved in like uh, Tabo was asking earlier in, with EXA in terms of qualification evaluation. So I do it uh, and I think you know, pro, uh, Mr. Dikoker, you know, me, Professor Mitch Gonet, I'm doing that with them, Professor Elsa B. Kesley and all other people that are involved in academia. We do the qualification evaluation because we look at the mix of the credits we look at the mix in terms of the knowledge areas that are covered. Now, remember in South Africa, the credits start bearing to be recognized when a student has passed with 50%. It's then that we say this person has now got the credits for this. For example, if a module has got 28 credits and you somebody obtained the, the module with 14 credits, it's not substantially equivalent. That those missing 14 credits must, it must be indicated by a gap analysis from the candidate to say, I have done one, two, three in industry, or I've studied further to close that gap, to make sure that I'm on the same path. We are not going to punish our own students that studied in our own programs that are internationally aligned because then we have to accept people from overseas. And there are many of them that don't make to the grade because the qualifications that they have done is to suit their conditions at that stage in that moment. So it is, it is in that line that one needs to understand how academia work, how the program qualification mix is done in terms of when we do a substantial equivalence in terms of that. So in the masters, those that have the BTEC, they said, okay, we open a pathway to go further to do the masters because in the workplace, it was not found to be suitable or coming up. And EXA opened this pathway and those that have got the Bachelor of Engineering uh, Technology in, civil, in either civil engineering, mechanical, electrical, to close that gap. So you have to do study further, do the honors. Honors is not for registration purposes, then you go to the masters. That's the qualification that is recognized. Now, many universities, there are two of them that I know the country, I will not mention their name at this platform because it's not appropriate, have started that, but they missed the point. They've calculated the, the masters, professional masters. Then he said, but are you saying students will come from the B and direct? They said, yes. I said, no, go and check. The masters is at NQF level nine. The BNC tech is at, at NQF level seven. NQF level eight is missing. What is that? The honors. Oh, then they have to go back. So there are two qualifications that have to be done to get to that level. Now, question simple that comes is you cannot do an honors and leave it there. It means it pushes you to go to the masters. But they avoided that you study for three years full. All of them are exit qualifications in that regard. So, but all the information is in E 22 PE for the professional masters, the requirements, and what are the graduate attributes about. But if you can take the E-02 PE, which is for the BNG or the Bachelor of Science in Engineering qualification, you'll see the mirror image. And when this was created, I was part of the team with the engineers. It was with that idea to say, but these students that come from with the diploma and the BTEC, they've already done engineering. The last part of the Bachelor of Engineering of Science in Engineering is what is missing. So one year will be enough for them to cover that. It's just them to get that leg over so that they can register in terms of the, as a candidate engineers. But more of you, I know, you've got experience, but the hurdles that you need as per the requirements to have that education, education leg to pass it through. When you go over to the professor registration, most of you just come through with flying colors and it happens so easy when you get there. But 
Unfortunately, with our system, that has to be done. Now, what I was referring to earlier was that those that did not have the qualification, it was before this came into bank, into being, it used to be called the old man's clause, whereby it was competency only that was recognized and not anything to do with academia. And they went through. But things have changed since then that no, this other M, and it's because of our joining of the International Internet Alliance. EXAP came on board in 1999, whereby the IEA started in 1989 with the six countries of the world. But since then, at every initial accord or agreement, we've been there in South Africa and represent ourselves and voice our concern. So we add value as well to say, this cannot come into our program, this can come into our program. Like for example, now, at the listening meeting that we had in June this year, we've changed the graduate attribute, we've changed the uh, 11 outcomes, there's going to be a change, but we've got a transition period of three years. After 2024, everything has to be in place. We, be, we are going to engage the universities in November this year, the Dean's Forum, and explain to them the changes that are coming because the IEA and the World Federation of Engineer Organizations, WAFIO, have agreed to amend to suit what the conditions are going in the world. And they said, as if they could predict that the pandemic was coming, but that was on the 4IR and the sustainability of engineering that they had to change that. So we are saying, let's look how far this, this uh, pandemic will go. In five, 10 years to come, we might even gain, again change that. So as South Africa, we are sitting at a cold phase where we make decisions that impact the world. And I'm still thankful that we've got people like iPad, uh, the vision that Mr. DeCocker has, and the president, Mr. Maynard, has there to bring this up to the core of our people in the country so that they can be abreast with the information to take over further moving forward. Thank you, Mr. DeCocker. Thank you, Jones. Chris, you had a hand up there. And Tom also had yeah. a hand up. Okay, I just want to make a comment there, you know, where the one uh, question was about we must start specializing and showing it on EXA. Uh, to be honest, then it will cause us all to stay in just one field. But because of our type of work that we do, we tend to learn more competencies. For instance, if you stay specialized in water, you start tending to go over to maybe to uh, structures or you start with the uh, purification works and that where you were just doing water pipelines. So I don't say the thing is, if we have to look at our code of conduct, our code of conduct says that we have to have that <coughs> sort of integrity to be honest and be able to do that and be competent in that work because you can't just stay in one field your whole life, you tend to go to different fields also. You know, like if you're doing water, you tend to go later on, you start getting involved in road, roads designs and that, but you get your competency that you can do it confidently. That's why I say EXO should never put there to say we just specialize in water and that the way it should say we in civil engineering, and then you have to have the code of conduct to understand that how it must be done. If you're going to go into from civil engineering to mechanical, yes, you will have to have that transitional there. It does happen. That's all I want to make a comment on. Thank you, Chris. Any John, questions? No, no, Dr. Chair, can I ask something? Yes, please do. So, Brother Manasani, I'm meeting you after a long, long time. So, can you hear me, Marasane? Where is he? He's muted at the moment. Okay, I wanted to ask something from him. Oh, really? Dr. Sina, sorry, Hi, brother. I'm, I'm mute, but <laughs> a long time. it takes time to get back. I don't know why. I press, press, nothing happens. It, it's slow. Okay, Hello, Dr. No Sina. Problem. So, yes. I wanted to ask you, it, any university of technology has just started my a professional master any eot has just started yes a but UNISA, we are still pending for endorsement exa yes so any university has just started or not yeah university of johannes beck has started already with that but uh, don't forget when you start it don't forget the honors because the feeder to the professional masters is the is the honors Many people forget the honors. They go from being tech direct to masters. That the honors must be there. No, I am thinking 
if can graduate has attended 70%, why not he or she will be enrolled directly for professional master? Why you should do honors? No, initialize the practice. I'm teaching honors module. But I'm thinking if he has got 70%, why not he will be directed directly for professional master? What is the reason? Yeah, I think that one can maybe be directed further to the dean's forum University. because they are the ones. Yeah, and you see, at the end of the day, what you need to remember, EXA get that there's a dean's forum and there's also president forum of the volunteer association that dictate the discourse on other things. So the, the dean's forums were the ones who came to say, the from the BN stack, you need the honors and you need the professional masters, not direct. So it came from there. And EXA, from what the dean's forum said, because they're in academia, they just implemented it. Okay. Yeah, okay. so it must go so, back to the deans if that needs to be reversed yeah. or have a leeway in that way. Because Exxon mm. will say, but it came from US Academia to tell us. So all the deans of engineering faculties in the country be from engineering science and engineering technology, they meet at Exa and they come up with this. I was only part of the task team that did the groundwork to do the match and place, if I will put it that way, of what is missing from the, the B -Eng that is not there from the technology student with the BTEC and the diploma to close the gap. So what about TUT? Are you working for the professional masters? Uh, the I, no, 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 we've only started with the honors at the moment uh, that it will kick in next year. Then we'll take it further from there. Because the CHP okay. as well does not allow that uh, mm. we present two qualifications at the same time that follow each other. So we must do first one first, then the next one. But the intent is to get to there. But we started first with the honors that will go live next year. So it will be both program, professional masters plus research masters. No, 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 no. Yeah, all the, the research masters is, is here already. Yes, the professional masters will come later because we'll have the honors anyway. Okay, no, thank you very much. Thank, thank you very much, Dr. Sina. Good to hear your voice again. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Pleasure, Dr. Sina. Pleasure. So I must not mute anymore because my mute button gives trouble. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't see any more hands. Um, let's see if there's any any more hands. Anybody who has other questions, questions regarding um, registration, maybe uh, that you have burning questions. We will have another talk in two weeks' time on on extra registration. Um, uh, we don't know what subject, uh, uh, what about extra registration yet, but we will have uh, another forum in two weeks' time. And uh, then, obviously, you will be able to answer, get all your registration questions answered. And if you have special, uh, you, you, there's something that you want us to discuss, please give it to us on the hyper chat, chat groups or uh, send an email or a, a request on, on the phone number I gave. And uh, then we can handle it. Chidi, you've got your hand up. Yes, um, I'm sorry about be repeating the same question. Um, I'm just concerned with the CPD points. Is it possible that EXA can suggest some courses and offer them, and then we sort of facilitate some courses for us that will give us CPD points? Since now at least things are done virtually, so they won't be traveling. Then we can just um, affiliate if we have to. Is it possible? Thank you. Sorry, I don't think I get the question. Uh, okay, I, I know what she wants there. Can I just come in there, Johan? Please do, Chris. Okay. CD, you say Exxon must give you a guideline on the CPD points. Am I correct on CPD courses? No, they should, uh, they should afford us CPD courses. They should? If, if it's possible that they can give uh, courses that will uh, allow us to have the points. Okay, they do, do, they do do courses there and they do advertise it, but uh, different voluntary associations also. And we also do free CPD courses there that are on our website there. Uh, your underworker will put it on there and you can go and directly go and see those courses too. Okay. All right. Because Thank I you. know you're looking for CPD points and you don't, 
and you might not uh, you might have a problem in paying some of the high exorbitant rates some of our courses are they free and some of them do you do pay but they are very very reasonable prices Okay. Are you then with, with the courses that you guys are offering? Um, are you then willing they, to uh, sort of, can they be can they be offered to a group of of of, of candidates? If uh, yes and no, the a lot of the courses are there that you do in your own time on our website. There, you oh, will okay. do there, so you can actually give it to your uh, colleagues, and they can also do it at their own time go through those courses there, which are advertised for free there. There are also other courses that you do pay for, but they are very, very reasonable prices there. You don't break your arm and a leg just to pay for it. I it's see you on from Skakewell, a sculptor who's got something he wants to come and talk about that too. Carry on, you on. If you, if you have- Ah, oh, fine, Chris, be like that. Um, Yes. Just to answer your question or to give you some security of the future, um, iPad and myself are so busy with an online platform where you will be able to have access to CPD courses, some free, some paid for, but at a nominal fee. Um, we also in the process of asking people who want to contribute to that website. That's that professional CPD one that you saw there. Um, so that we can start populating that. Jonas, you're also welcome to um, add some material to that. Um, I'll get all the information, put it up there. Um, your underquirk and um, an iPad gets it validated. So you will see within the um, next couple of months and especially next year, um, that thing will be populated with lots of access to um, CPD material. Um, and there will be a wide range available on that. So we're busy with that talk. Um, myself and Chris have been talking about this for a long time. So. I guess we're getting closer and closer to giving that solution. Yeah, Chris. Yes, Charles. Can I assist? You? I think. Yeah, I find myself president. Yeah. Yes, president. Thanks. I think CD was saying EXA to give, and I just want to assist there. EXA cannot offer CPD courses. They are the regulator of the profession. They approve what iPad will be offering. The voluntary associations and other providers. So EXA cannot give, uh, they, are the, they, are the, they are the regulator of the profession. They cannot be the referee and the player at the same time. They are the referee in the whole mix between you as, a, as, a, as, a, as an individual registered person and the VAs and what you are doing the profession. I just want to clarify that one in terms of that. that and I, I normally get this, but yeah, okay. why can't EXA give us this? They give you a course, you come and register with them, they don't recognize it. You follow, they cannot do that because they're the regulator of the profession. Hence, it come from right. like what Johan Franska Greg was saying that the providers on the outside are the ones that are offering the courses that have been approved by EXA. EXA will only do the approval to the voluntary associations and other providers, but they cannot offer the CPD courses. Uh, Is can that I just come the, in the, there, the, Yeah, the, yes. Can I just come in there quickly? They do, uh, they do advertise courses there on their website too sometimes. No, 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 some accredited courses, but no, no, it's no, no, not no. Uh, EXA itself. It is yeah. people that not work for them. Yes, they, 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 they might use EXA uh, That's correct, but they don't yeah, but they, give it to themselves. No. I think a question comes that who EXA, and I think that we need to clarify who's EXA. If, for example, now we have to go to court, and Anna Marie will know about this, the ex, when you say EXA, it is the 50 council members that are there. It will be the first one with the same name A and the other 49. That is EXA. But over and above that, there are staff members inside EXA. And us, as the people who are registered with EXA, we are EXA as well. So it, it becomes dicey. In a, we must understand EXA is a council. And like for now, we know we are doing assessments with them. We are doing accreditation. We are doing all of this work for EXA. We are the ones that are EXA at the end of the day. Hence, they cannot do that. They cannot give a course and again approve it on what you submit to them. It's not going to work that way because they are the regulator of the profession. It's the same as a driving school. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that's why they are there. The, the, the traffic department cannot teach you how to drive and tomorrow they assess you. When you fail and point figure, say, but how is it working? Because they, that's why you go to a driving school. A driving school will be the one that appoints that they do an application to the traffic department for you to get assessed by the traffic officers. 
So the traffic officers cannot teach you how to drive and assess you tomorrow. That's where EXA comes in in there. I just want to give a logical explanation as to why EXA will not do that is because they are the regulator of the profession. Thanks, Jones. That's, no the, that's a very valid uh, explanation. And uh, thanks for a very clear expl explanation there. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Any, any other questions? I see it's getting late. Um, I would still again ask you if there's anyone that's finding that you are being, uh, uh, what's named against because you're a technologist and you, you're not allowed to tender for a tender or something like that, uh, please bring it to our attention so that we can take it up. Um, but uh, we would, but we need the actual, uh, actual evidence of it. We, we can't just go on hearsay. And uh, as I said, we are already acting on, on some, some allegations and uh, we've got more in pipeline. So uh, please notify us and uh, give us the information so that we can do something about it. Apart from that, uh, we uh, will put this talked of today it's being recorded so it will go on to the um uh, to the, the uh, website that uh Johan van Skalkwe spoke about i did give it in the the talk the um the final uh, that slide the, the website is there and our if you have any questions send it to our phone number uh, give us a whatsapp on 073-336-2471. And uh, yeah, if there's any, um, any further questions, please say so. But um, I think it looks like everybody is now need uh, a comfort break and uh, a cup of coffee. So, Chris, do you still want to say something to close off? Johan, yes. if I could just I say know. the voluntary associations do advertise courses that they can do for CPD points. Uh, sorry, as a voluntary association? The voluntary associations yeah. do advertise courses that you can do for CPD points, but EXA does not do that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's, the, that's the job of the voluntary associations is to to be um, to provide uh, continuous prof professional development. In other words, most of them are learned societies, and that is that is how why they were brought into into being to be learned societies and share uh, technical detail about various things and provide courses and uh, uh, so. Um, we, from IPET, we used to not provide courses because we are a multidisciplinary organization and we could never get enough people for a course, but things have changed, especially with online now. And uh, hopefully we'll, we'll do another course or two before the end of the year. And we try and be very reasonable in our prices, uh, not to, to be too... Uh, as expensive as some of the other organizations um, because we consider it as a, as, as a service to members. And uh, because it's online now, obviously you don't have to provide lunch and you don't have to, to pay for a venue. So we can do it for, for a much uh, more affordable price. So thank you everyone, Chris. Okay, I just want to say thanks to Johan for the presentation. That was uh, very uh, good for everybody. But I think the next week, I mean, in two weeks' time, we might have to talk about the code of conduct. I don't know if you agree on that, Johan, because I'm picking that up. A lot of the people don't. Uh, uh, when we do the interviews for registration, even for uh, invite, I mean, 
they don't seem to understand the code of conduct. And I think we must talk about that in the two weeks time that people can understand the code of conduct, what it means and how to go about it and what it does and the implications of the code of conduct. I don't know if you agree on that too. I see Johan von Skalpek, or we call him Johan Jr. agrees. I think Johan Sr. will also agree on that. So I think it's a great you idea. Say thank, I think that's all I've got to say. And I say thanks for everybody, especially Jonas that came in and yourself, Johan, and everybody else that came in to talk. Thanks a lot. And thanks to all the participants also for asking the questions. Some of them were tough for us, but we got through it in a collective way. Thanks a lot. Enjoy your day. Johan, you come off slate. Yeah, it looks like it. We, we will be applying for a point two. Uh, CPD for this uh, because it took us yeah. uh, two hours. So um, C CPD works that way that you get uh, one point for ten hours of of, of uh, continuing professional development. Call it study, <laughs> or for a full day. Thank you, everybody. I'm gonna close the meeting. <laughs>